But anyway, you'll have fun with John, John Hall, okay? My good friend, who I call my Benford buddy, uh, Dr. Mark Negrini, uh, he'll be in this morning right after Harry. Um, he was watching our presentations yesterday, and he was very impressed with a lot of things, but he liked the way the setup was here, and he really enjoyed the speakers. Now, he's a man that uh, some of you probably have heard about before. Very, very interesting. He can take very um, difficult type of concepts to understand, and he can put them to a level where someone like me, who doesn't really too much stand, uh, doesn't understand too much of anything, to a deep, deep level, uh, he can explain things to me. And I can tell you, I've seen him uh, speak uh, at least a half a dozen times, and I always learn quite so much from him. So you'll have fun with uh, Mark Negrini as well. And then finally, Harry Markopoulos. He'll be our speak first speaker up this morning. Uh, we're not going to solve this as individuals. We're only going to do it as teams together all of us together. And so thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Yeah, that was a wonderful presentation by, by Harry. Nice to be here. Uh, we have a good program today. So, I'm going to be talking about the fingerprints of fraud numbers, and we're going to be talking about the actual fraud numbers that fraudsters use. Well, which schemes do I care about? I care about occupational fraud, alive and well, in 2020. Bribery, alive and well, in 2020. And financial statement fraud, alive and well as well. We start off with Catherine Harrell. I took that photo myself. Catherine worked at that bank in South Philadelphia. And I feel like I wanted to be talking to my students. When I talk to my students, I tell them, you never ever want a document in this world that starts off with the words United States of America versus followed by <laughs> your name. And I repeat this many times. Catherine, not so lucky. Catherine stole $509,952. And you would think that if you stole $509,952, you have to be savvy. You have to know about accounting. You have to know about preventive and detective controls. You have to know how to bypass these controls. You have to be really good. No. She simply, she was a branch manager, she simply went into customer accounts and withdrew funds. So, this is the first one, and you can see, and we're going to be looking for round numbers now. So let's move on to the second slide. And you can see that she started with a fraud of 44,000. This is quite unusual. 44,000, and then I also tell my students, I say, how much does somebody have to take out of your account before you notice it? A. 44,000, B, less than 44,000. One student one told me, <laughs> one student once told me, he said $2, because then they sent me an email because I'd be overdrawn. <laughs> so, <laughs> 44,000, so that's the starting, and this fraud lasted for two years. So, let's have a look at some of the numbers. Right at the bottom here, um, I forget the date, is it August 22nd? August 22nd, $8,000. Two days later, $7,000. I don't know about you, but if you gave me $8,000 on August 22nd, I'd make it last. <laughs> I'd use coupons, I'd see what's on sale, I'd use the store brand, but I'd kind of stretch the eight grand and make it last a little bit longer. And there we see another transaction just a few days later. So. These are the fraudulent withdrawals out of customer accounts. And what we should notice here is she liked round numbers. More. Withdrawals from customer accounts, and again, she liked the round numbers. Well, this takes a while. She stole 509,000. Oops. There we go. Still busy with the numbers? 
still busy with the numbers. We have a little quiz at the end here. In addition to you having to do that very complicated thing about saving the letter, here's the quiz. Embezzlement of funds by a bank employee. 39 counts, oops, judgment in a criminal case. So, you steal 509,952. How much do you get? That's the next page of the judgment. It's like a quiz for everybody at home as well. But you can answer from the audience. Yes, how much time in jail? Actually, Regina, you are not that wrong. One day to remain in the holding cell with the U.S. Marshals until 5 p.m. I ask you, what time does this conference, uh, Frank, finish today? Uh, quarter to five. Quarter to five. So, for extra 15 minutes, <laughs> that was her sentence. Aha, there's more to it. Three months later, a new indictment. She is in trouble again.